Howdy folks, this is Checkers, and I want to transport you back to a time long ago, a simpler time, when the first CRPGs, the first computer role-playing games, stalked the Earth. The genre wasn't invented 20 years ago, but much closer to 40 as I write this. It was an outgrowth of the desire to play Dungeons and Dragons, tabletop role-playing on home computers. You may not recognize it at first. It may be a challenge to see the history, the evolution, the digital DNA. But if you're patient, you will find the links. You may need to be brave to forget modern conventions, to see the graphics with a joyous eye. To see how our animated ancestors began, it really does help to forget the complexity of the present. Imagine yourself a digital Dr. Jones, an archaeologist of our shared gaming history. We are sifting through the sands of time, pushing past 34 years to challenge ourselves to become heroes. We're here to share, to explore, to live and remember our history together. Join me on the quest of the Avatar. Welcome to Ultima 4. Below the title, you see before you a demo screen. In days of yore, software and electronic shops, computers would be set up on stands with these screens repeating over and over, the demos of their day. They show some of the feats of programming the play of the game. They catch the eye to sell the experience. Before we get started, Music was not a part of this version, so I've included links to different playlists, from the Apple II soundtrack to some other less mm, accurate suggestions. The DOS version we'll be playing did not have music, so while the video is true to history, the accompaniment is entirely up to you. Have fun. Enjoy. All right, and with our first cycle through the demo screen finally coming to an end, we will take a look at the main options, which are in another world, in another time to come, return to the view, journey onward, or initiate new game. By what name shalt thou be known in this world and time? Checkers. Art thou male or female? We will be male because, well, it goes better with my voice. The day is warm, yet there is a cooling breeze. The latest in a series of personal crises seems insurmountable. You are being pulled apart in all directions. Yet this afternoon walk in the countryside slowly brings relaxation to your harried mind. The soil and strain of modern high-tech living begins to wash off in layers. That willow tree near the stream looks comfortable and inviting. The buzz of dragonflies and the whisper of the willow's swaying branches bring a deep peace. Searching inward for tranquility and happiness, you close your eyes. A high-pitched, cascading sound like crystal wind chimes impinges on your floating awareness. As you open your eyes, you see a shimmering blueness rise from the ground. The sound seems to be emanating from this glowing portal. It is difficult to look at the blueness. Light seems to bend and distort around it. While the sound waves become so intense, they appear to become visible. The portal hangs there for a moment. Then, with the rush of an imploding vacuum, it sinks into the ground. Something remains suspended in mid-air for a moment before falling to earth with a heavy thud. Somewhat shaken by this vision, you rise to your feet to investigate. A crude circle of stone surrounds the spot where the portal appeared. There is something glinting in the grass. 
you pick up an amulet shaped like a cross with a loop at the top. It is an Ankh, the sacred symbol of life and rebirth. But this could not have made the thud, so you look again and find a large book wrapped in thick cloth. With trembling hands you unwrap the book. Behold, the cloth is a map, and within lies not one book, but two. The map is of a land strange to you, and the style speaks of ancient cartography. The script on the cover of the first book is arcane but readable. The title is The History of Britannia, as told by Kyle the Younger. The other book is disturbing to look at. Its small cover appears to be fashioned out of some sort of leathery hide, but from what creature is uncertain. The reddish-black skin radiates an intense aura, suggestive of ancient power. The tongue of the title is beyond your ken. You dare not open the book and disturb whatever sleeps within. You decide to peruse the history. Settling back under the willow tree, you open the book. You read the book of history. No, really, read the book of history. Now, at this point, you would read through the manual, the actual manual of the game, which has quite a bit of information in it. I'm not entirely sure how to deal with that, so we're just going to move on. From here, there is information about the land, about the people who live there, the types of characters you can be, many things. Closing the book, you again pick up the Ankh. As you hold it, you begin to hear a hauntingly familiar lute-like sound wafting over a nearby hill. Still clutching the strange artifacts, you rise unbidden and climb the slope. In the valley below, you see what appears to be a fair. It seems strange that you came that way earlier and noticed nothing. As you mull this over, your feet carry you down towards the site. This is no ordinary traveling carnival, but a renaissance fair. The pennants on the tent tops blow briskly in the late afternoon breeze. The ticket-taker at the Ren Fair's gate starts to ask you for money, but upon spotting your Ankh says, Welcome, friend. Enter in peace and find your path. The music continues to pull you forward amongst the merchants and vendors. Glimpses of fabulous treasures can be seen in some of the shadowy booths. These people are very happy, they seem to glow with an inner light. Some look up as you pass and smile, but you cannot stop. The music compels you to move onward through the crowd. Through the gathering dusk, you see a secluded gypsy wagon sitting off in the woods. The music seems to emanate from the wagon. As you draw near, a woman's voice weaves into the music, saying, You may approach, O seeker. You enter to find an old gypsy sitting in a small curtained room. She wears an ankh around her neck. In front of her is a round table covered in deep green velvet. The room smells so heavily of incense that you feel dizzy. Seeing the ankh, the ancient gypsy smiles and warns you never to part with it. We have been waiting such a long time. But at last you have come. Sit here, and I shall read the path of your future. Upon the table she places a curious wooden object, like an abacus but without beads. In her hands she holds eight unusual cards. Let us begin the casting. The gypsy places the first two cards upon the table. They are the cards of justice and sacrifice. She says, consider this. During a pitched battle, thou dost see a fellow desert his post, endangering many. As he flees, he is set upon by several enemies. Dost thou, A, justly let him fight alone, or B, 
risk sacrificing thine own life to aid him. Uh, it may not be the best idea, but B, we will try sacrificing to save him. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of spirituality and humility. She says, consider this. Thy parents wish thee to become an apprentice. Two positions are available. Dost thou, A, become an acolyte in the spiritual order, or B, become an assistant to a humble village cobbler? We will choose A, an acolyte. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of honesty and honor. She says, consider this. Thou art sworn to protect thy lord at any cost, yet thou know he hath committed a crime. Authorities ask thee of the affair. Dost thou, A, break thine oath by honestly speaking, or B, uphold honor by silently keeping thine oath? Well, hopefully it was a minor crime. Since they don't specify, I'll say keep my oath. B, the gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of compassion and valor. She says, consider this. Thou dost manage to disarm thy mortal enemy in a duel. He is at thy mercy. Dost thou, A, show compassion by permitting him to yield, or B, slay him as expected of a valiant duelist? B, slay him because it does say mortal enemy. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of honor and spirituality. She says, consider this. In thy youth thou pledge to marry thy sweetheart. Now thou art on a sacred quest in distant lands. Thy sweetheart asks thee to keep thy vow. Dost thou A. Honor thy pledge to wed, or B. Follow thy spiritual crusade? A. Wed, because we can always go on another quest. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of valor and a sacrifice. She says, consider this. A mighty knight accosts thee and demands thy food. Dost thou A. Valiantly refuse and engage the knight, or B. Sacrifice thy food unto the hungry knight? A. Valiantly engage. He could have just asked. The gypsy places the last two cards upon the table. They are the cards of valor and honor. She says, consider this. During battle, thou art ordered to guard thy commander's empty tent. The battle goes poorly, and thou dost yearn to aid thy fellows. Dost thou, A, valiantly enter the battle to aid thy companions, or B, honor thy post as guard? I want to say A, but I'm going to say B, simply because I'm going to hope the commander isn't a complete moron. There might be intel or maps or something important in the tent. It may be empty of people, but not information. With the final choice, the incense swells up around you. The gypsy speaks as if from a great distance, her voice growing fainter with each word. So be it. Thy path is chosen. There is a moment of intense, wrenching vertigo. As you open your eyes, a voice whispers within your mind, Seek the counsel of thy sovereign. After a moment, the spinning subsides, and you open your eyes to... The game screen. Checkers. 300G. So 300 hit points in good condition. Food, 300. Gold, 200. Magic points, strength, dexterity, intelligence... Level, hit points, hit points maximum, experience, weapon is sword, armor is chain mail. All right. Okay. A little breather there because that was actually quite a lot to read. Let's go ahead and get a feel for the game and how exactly to move. Using the numeric keypad for all those who wonder why I use it, this is why. Enter Trinsic. Heading east. Now we talk to the east. You meet a strong paladin. Your interest. 
Tell me your name, he says. I am Rigmore. What's your job, Rigmore? I am the welcomer. Welcome. Yes, welcome to Trinsic, the city of honor. Honor. Wisdom on the virtue of honor is found throughout this town. Dost thou seek this wisdom? Yes, yes I do. Enter and find thy path. So we get information by asking questions, in this case Shrine, and we find out that he cannot help thee with that. We also need a mantra, he doesn't know that. How about rune? Nope. Stone? No. All right, then, bye. Now, we know about these from the manual that we didn't read in the video. The folks in white are guards. Let's talk to this person. You meet a sleepy fighter. He says, I am Publius. Your interest job, I drink a toast to honor. Tell me about honor. What is left when honor is lost? Lost? I cannot help thee with that. All right, how about shrine? I cannot help thee with that. Mantra? Nope. Rune? No. Stone? No. All right, then. Bye. Bye. All right. How about this person over here? Talk. You meet a handsome fighter. And your name is Dupree. Your job. I am town leader. Well, nice to meet you, town leader Dupree. Leader. Tis an honor. Dost thou try to live honorably? Try, yes. It is a constant quest. Honor is like finely polished armor. Without constant care, it will soon tarnish. All right, then. Can you tell me about the shrine? No. Mantra? No. Rune? No. Stone? No. Join? I cannot join thee. Ah, well. Bye, Dupree. Bye. Now the tap. So this is a pub that we're in. Let's head south here. See what other kind of trouble we can get into. Heading east following the path, but let's break off and talk to this person, if we can catch them. He says, I am Klein. You meet a searching paladin. Job. I seek entry to the Shrine of Honor. Know ye the two requirements to use and enter the Shrine? No. What dost thou think? Hmm, I think I should try that again and say yes. Shrine. I cannot help thee with that. Oh, wait. Was it honor or job? I seek entry into the shrine of honor. Know ye the two requirements to enter and use the shrine? Yes. What are they? Uh, let's see. It's um, mantra and... The mantra is Sum. He gave us the mantra. Excellent. And rune. A man named Winthrop knows of the rune. Thanks. I cannot help thee with that. All right, then. Bye. Bye. All right, let's see what's up here. Actually, you know what? Let's go out and save quick. Since we have the mantra now, and we can only save outside of town. All right, going back in to Trinsic. And here we have the Honorable Inn. 
Talking west, you meet a soulful fighter. He says, I am Durgan. Job, I seek a place to rest. Rest. I have quested long and hard quest. I seek enlightenment at the Shrine of Honor. Art thou enlightened in honor? No. The shrine lies to the south and west beyond the swamps. Okay, so now we have the mantra and the location of the shrine. This is better. So mantra, he cannot help us with that. But I like to ask usually all the questions. So stone, I think the stones come from the dungeons, but they might tell us about the dungeon. The rune, we still need to find, right? And he cannot help us, so bye and bye. And let's talk to this wiggly person up here. You meet a scruffy merchant. He says, I am Winthrop. Hey, Winthrop, we were told to come and talk to you. Job, a trade in rumors. Rumors. About what? Rune, right? There is a small child who knew named Terran. Dost thou know him? No. Find him and ask of the rune. Well, all right. Thanks, Winthrop. We'll do that. Bye. I suspect these are the inn rooms here of the Honorable Inn. So let's head south and explore more of Terinzik. I think the blue there is a fountain or like a pond or pool. Did we talk to you? Talk north. You meet a shining paladin. He says, I am Lexington, your interest job. I am warlord of Trinzic. Warlord, I have solved many quests. Quests, the solving of quests brings ye honor. Strive ye for honor? Strive, yes. Then solve quests, but attack not non-evil creatures and get not others gold so don't steal and don't attack like animals and non-evil things okay well thanks bye lexington head south someone down here talk you meet a wandering mage your name she says i am quicks or kicks your job i seek the skeleton don't we all Skeleton? It knows a great secret. And what secret is that? About the purple stone of honor. Dost thou have the purple stone? No. No, I don't. Seek it, for it is very useful. Well, thanks for letting me know. Rune, I cannot help thee with that. Bye. I don't know if it's right. I'm beginning to suspect that Everybody only knows one thing. Oh, that is a poison field. That I do know. So there's somebody hiding behind a poison field for some reason. All right. Let's head over. We're going to mix some reagents, actually. You know what? We can mix a cure spell. So we mix M for mix, C for the cure spell. We mix reagent B, which is ginseng, with reagent C. And we get our cure spell. All right, let's head east again. And here's a child. He says, I am Terran. Well, hi, Terran. We were told to come and find you. What's your job? I ran from the bull. The bull, you say? A big one with long, pointy horns. Is it gone yet? Uh, I don't know. Yes, I don't see it. Phew, I thought it would get me, for sure. Your interest, Rune, it is buried in the southwest corner of town. Of course it is, because that's where the poison field is. Thanks, I cannot help thee with that. Well, all right, bye, bye. Let's take a look north here. So we can actually move through the trees. It does slow our progress. There's this bull. Well, I mean, it's kind of gone. We could attack it, but we've just learned that would damage our honor because it's not evil, it's just a bull. So let's go through the slow progress and talk to this person. You meet a tall wizard. He says, I am Swindrick. Your job, I cast spells. Spells, spells of great power. 
Dost thou cast spells of great power? Um, potentially, yes. What is the most powerful reagent? I think from memory, that's Mandrake. Ask at the Foley Tavern of Mandrake. I got it right. All right, cool. Memory isn't completely Swiss cheese. Bye. Bye. All right. We'll head north again. Slow progress. We're in a wooded area, I think, now. So the trees are like heavy forest, and that's just like a wooded area, I think. Oh, this is Klein. He told us about the mantra, right? Okay, so let's push through the trees, see if... Hello! You meet a bony skeleton. Of course we do. Name, I am Skittle. Of course it is. What's your job, Skittle? I hail from Dungeon Deep. Dungeon. I came from the Dungeon Shame. Shame. I cannot help thee with it. Well, that's actually a shame. Stone. I have seen the purple stone used in the altars of truth and courage. Ever been there? No. I can't say as I have. It holds items thou shalt need. I believe you. I don't suppose you'd care to take me there. Your interest, purple. That I cannot help thee with. All right, then. Bye, Skittle. Enjoy your corner of Trinsic. Okay. So we've got to get through the poison field now. Let's mix up another cure spell just in case because poison hits you every round. So every move, every step you take, poison will be watching you. All right. All mixed up and ready to go. And walking route. I should have gone straight through the one-sided. But hey, at least we're not poisoned. Our condition still says 300G, so good. Hey, we found the rune here. Just press S to search in two places and third place we got it. You meet a mystic wizard. He says, I am Virgil, your interest. Job, I create magical fields. Fields, poison is my favorite. Yeah, I can tell. Tis it thine? Ah, uh, yes. When you're trapped in a poison field with a mage, you say, yes. Bye. Bravo, he says. Just, just being happy in his corner, making poison fields like you do. Okay, so we've been to the tap, and this leads to the Honorable Inn, and this is Winthrop. These are the inn rooms. No, we can't go out that way. Back open this way just wander into this room. All right. I think, I think we've pretty much covered Trinsic. There's chests up there, presumably to tempt you into being dishonorable and stealing from them. Let's head out and save. All right, 487 moves. All right, we will bring our first episode of Ultima 4 to a close. I hope you've actually had fun on our shared historical journey, our archaeological trip back 34 years into the past. I never did play Ultima 4 in the past. I joined Ultima with Ultima 5. From Ultima 5 on, you are the Avatar. So this is my first chance to actually gain Avatarhood and to share it with you. I would like to say thank you for watching. I hope you found the video entertaining and maybe even just a little informative. I would like to invite you to subscribe. Thank you kindly if you are already subscribed. I'd also like to invite you to like and share if you so desire. Most of all though, I would like to ask you to please, please, 
take care.